Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Man, you guys are awesome. It's so awesome watching the Spirit of God just work through you guys, listening to all you guys. I uh, Sometimes I'll throw my headphones on throughout the day and I'll listen to you guys and man, it's just so awesome. I just praise God, glorify God for what he's doing through you guys, listening to you guys, watching you guys. Just seeing, and it's not like uh, I'm sitting there. It's just amazing when you look at brothers and sisters and those who belong to Christ, and you really just see the Spirit of God moving through their life. It's amazing. Um, so, yeah, I just I just thank the Lord, you know, every day for you guys. And, uh, you know, that's what a true true family is, and it's just so amazing. So, I just wanted to get, get back into the Scriptures, jumping right back into Matthew chapter 13. We're going to go ahead and finish it up today, depending... Um, where we're at, we'll just carry it on, Matthew chapter 14, um, as we're getting here to the parables, and uh, Christ amongst his disciples, amongst the scribes and the Pharisees, and uh, as we see, because he, he is the word of God, he's the living word of God, and uh, he, he is the spirit that lives inside of us, it's by his word, his truth, that guides us, guides us in all knowledge, all understanding, it's the light that shines through through us, it's, it's him that goes before us and walks amongst us and, and, and leads the way for us. And it's amazing. So for basically to what we're seeing here is, is disciples following in Christ, having understanding in Christ, the Holy Spirit, which is going to come, but it's amongst them. But it's just a foreshadow and a foreshadow of just the knowledge of what comes to Christ, true salvation. Um, purpose, meaning, but the Word of God and being able to understand the Word of God, being able to have a relationship with Christ and have the true and living God living inside of you, but it's by authority. And everything that he is saying and everything that he's doing here, he's obviously lining it up to the Old Testament, to Moses, to the law, to the prophets, because he is the Word. He's the living Word. It all came from them. They're the ones who was talking to him. And uh, the scribes and the Pharisees can't see that, can't understand that. Even though they know the law, they're familiar with it, familiar with the scripts. Um, they're not putting one and one together because they refuse to. Their hearts are too hardened. It's all out of envy, jealousy, and what they can get. And they don't truly understand. And uh, what we're seeing here, too, is it doesn't matter by law, by who you are. Um, true understanding comes by the Son, comes by the Word of God, and by the Spirit of God that lives inside of us. And just like what we see at the beginning, Christ said, now understand, because true understanding came by him, which was given to his disciples, and that Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. And I'm just saying the Holy Spirit was amongst them, even though Christ hadn't died at this specific moment and given up the ghost so that the ghost could live inside of them. It was still amongst them. And, uh, you know, arguably it still be inside of them. But um, they were still with Christ, walking with Christ in his strength. And uh, following after him. And uh, the parable that he is showing here, he's actually living it out. I mean, he is uh, the word that goes out. And it's all who's going to accept it. And you see it here. You see how the seed, how the word, who he is, is landing amongst the hearts of people. And uh, yeah, it's just, just amazing. And uh, we're getting a lot of parables here. And uh, only by the Holy Spirit can we truly understand and, and truly um, allow God to show us the meaning, show us the purpose and, and what he wants us to take out of the scriptures. Um, because that's what's amazing about the word of God too is when you go into it just by faith, just trusting in the Lord, it doesn't matter where you're at, he's going to guide you. And there's going to be something where you're at for that moment in time, for what you're going through, what you're living in. And uh, it's because the word's alive, it speaks to you. It's, it's he who lives inside of you. It connects with the actual scriptures because it's his word. And he will show you, he'll help you understand. And uh, it doesn't matter too where you're at. You could literally read, I could read Matthew 13 um, for months and months and months. And it doesn't matter what I'm going through. The Lord will find something out of here for me because the word's alive. And it's just about knowing him. When you go out and we search to to get to know him through his scriptures he will show us who he is he will show us the truth he will show us who we are but he will also guide us he will show us uh, things that will help he'll show us more than just everything it's amazing but you guys already know that so yeah just wanted to jump back into 
Matthew 13 in the parables. Christ uh, obviously walking, for he is God, but he's walking amongst the Holy Spirit and giving his disciples understanding. And now by that Holy Spirit that's inside of us, we can ask him for understanding and he will show us and he will guide us as well too. So let's, let's just jump into prayer and just ask the Lord to be with us and just to guide us and just to show us what he wants uh, to show us what he wants to take for us to take out of it. Uh, true bread of life and, uh, you know, just so that we can glorify him. That's what it's about. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come together. Thank you for your scriptures, your wonderful word of life that you have perfectly preserved for us. It doesn't matter what we're going through, Lord. It's your word that speaks to us because you are the word and it's you that lives inside of us and it's you that guides us, you that shows us, gives us understanding, you that takes us where you want us to go to show us where you want us to go in the living word of God. And it's just amazing. It's amazing. I thank you because it's all we need. All we need is you and you have given us everything that we need, Lord. And, you know, I just lift your name up and I just thank you because, you know, I'm just not even worthy to have these scriptures to know who you are, let alone to, you know, just 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 to be able to teach, Lord. That's that's all it is. And I just thank you so much that you've allowed us to come together, uh, um, just allowed us to grow and lift your name up grow together as a body as a family to worship you to praise you to understand more about you and that's what it is and that's what it's about and I just thank you I thank you for for the family for your family for the body for the church Lord are you strengthening uh, them keeping them strong keeping them bold and I just thank you that we can come together and just dive into the word and just ask that you would guide us Holy Spirit that you would keep us uh, focused that you would show us anything that you want us to know and know about you and want us to have right now, Lord, because you are the true bread of life. It's what you have given us and we're satisfied in you and we just look to you. That's that's what it is. We look to you. We go to you. It's amazing. It's not just something that we have to do or we need to do. We love doing it. We love coming to your word and just getting to know you more and more and just, just feeding off of the word because it's you uh, that continuously guides us, that continuously strengthens us, continuously pushes us, shows us that you're there for us, comforts us, and it's just amazing by the Holy Spirit, by your presence, by everything that we have every day, by your word. It's you who is alive and alive in us, and I thank you. I thank you that we can just, just worship you and praise you, and I thank you uh, that we can do so through your word and coming together as a family and just, just lifting your name up, Lord. So thank you that uh, that you're with us, and I just pray and ask that you would guide us and just show you, uh, show us what you want us to know, Lord. Thank you, love you, in your holy name, Amen. Right on, guys. So just jumping right into um, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, it says we see Christ uh, giving parables, and that's what it comes down to. Just those who are born of the Holy Spirit, those who truly walk by the faith uh, and know Christ, salvation by that Holy Spirit, and that's just what it is. It's grace. Just accepting, just understanding, being born again, washed by the blood, salvation, a true son and daughter of the living God. And uh, all, and that's what it is. That's what you take out of all of, all of these parables is it's, it's faith. You just insert faith because it's him who does everything. He's the gardener. He's the one that applies uh, the sun, which is the sun, the wind, the Holy Spirit, the water, which all links to him, the Holy Spirit. Because it comes from him, we feed off of him. He's the uh, he's the father who takes care of us. The work is finished; it's completely done. Now we rest because he is so awesome. He's so merciful. He's so holy. He did everything for us. So um, it's just by faith. It's just by accepting. What do we want? How how you know how much of that are we willing to truly accept? Um, you know, are we tr truly willing to come to the realization of no matter how wicked, how bad? Uh, that we are what we've done or who we might uh, or what we might do that he he doesn't change and nothing will separate us from that love as long as we just stay in the faith just stay trusting in him just knowing that it's amazing he's so awesome so it says again the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field so christ is the kingdom christ is the treasure is his kingdom come, his will be done. He is the kingdom. Um, 
and that's not to separate obviously the actual kingdom of heaven but in in the context it's him who lives inside of you he is the treasure um which a man found so he found it seek and you truly find and he hid and for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field and uh it's just it's just dying to yourself picking up your cross and following after him it, it's life and life more abundantly in him but truly dying and understanding that understanding the true context the true nature of, of who we are why he came being free whoever the sun sets free is truly free indeed not just eternal life but no longer having to be alone having to go through issues by yourself um having one uh, the high priest our high priest who helps us that we can cast all of our cares all our anxieties everything upon him who's been there who was tempted at all points who now invites us and loves us to it, uh, you know we can approach the mercy uh, seat boldly now because of what he's done so that kingdom of heaven is is that treasure and he sells all that he has and he and he buys that field and that's what's awesome and that's what's interesting is is we see it's like the seed that goes out it's the seed and what it lands in that uh that dirt that field that heart how it's gonna land how it's going to uh how we're going to uh accept that and allow allow christ to truly uh produce fruit in us it says is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found so he truly was seeking he was seeking for treasure right christ is the treasure he says truly seek and you will find because the father uh drew him in and when he he found it um he, he found it and he hid it because it's dear to him and it's not to hide it to where uh, it's the parable to where um, of the, the talents where it's the actual works of the fruit where you, you don't do anything. Uh, you don't share the gospel. You don't show love. You don't pray. You don't get to know God. This is different. This is the actual tre treasure of Christ, of, of salvation in Christ. Truly finding him, selling everything, getting rid of everything, and, and so that he buys that field because it's new it's born just like the seed when it goes out a new plant and uh now hooked to the vine a new tree in god hooked to that field you're born again remember god created adam out of the dust out of the ground you die to yourself flesh to flesh so it's a new a new tree found it hit it he goes and sells all that he has just like the uh um just like the rich young ruler um easier once you truly find treasure the treasure that isn't of this world uh put in confidence put in trust you know and that's the thing too with the rich young ruler too you know he walked up to christ like oh yeah you know like n never truly had an issue with life never had to go through struggles like was had probably had everything handed handed to him and uh you know, probably just was like going to walk up to like, this is going to be easy. And then sure enough, you know, that pride and, and what that faith that he had, that trust that he had so much in those riches that he couldn't even let a little go, where it's just like faith the size of a mustard seed. Once you truly find it, man, you let it all go because you realize what the true treasure is. And then once, once you, once you truly give into it as it grows and grows and grows and grows, your treasure, your life more abundant, which is him life eternal and eternal with him your creator your maker goes beyond anything so you sell all that he has and buys that field so he invests in it understand too he buys it he puts everything that he can into that field he knows that's where the treasure is that holy spirit you're you're dead to yourself you pick up your cross every single day you follow after him you focus on it you you uh and that's what it is it's faith how do you do it? You trust and, and you believe and you allow him to do so and you buy that field. So again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. So as we see royalty, we see pearls, you know, and we can go to Revelation too, you know, from the transparent streets of gold, um, from the actual description, biblical descriptions of angels, how you will be like angels, the actual emeralds, sapphires, rubies, 
that and and what you will be but as you see it's it, it, what it compares to and just like you know the treasures of this world even though you know gold emerald sapphire whatever you want it will never be compared to what's in heaven just like you know the the bread or you know i like cinnamon rolls so the cinnamon rolls here will never be compared to the cinnamon rolls in heaven so understand here too but putting it in a context christ is putting in a context because he's also speaking amongst the scribes and the pharisees in a form to where they could understand what is truly treasure to them what do they trust in what do they go after well they like beautiful pearls they like gold they like you know this is something that they can relate to and that the world can relate to so christ puts it in a form of that but puts it in a form to where they can totally understand it, but they have no idea. It's awesome. Only the true living God can do that. <laughs> it's so funny, too. He leaves them hanging at the end, too. He just departs and just leaves them. He lays it all down, gives the dis disciples true understanding, true knowledge, true wisdom, just leaves all uh, the religious leaders just hanging in the, du in the dust. It's awesome. Um, so we see the king. It's like a merchant. So it was a merchant do buy, sell and trade, right? And for investing and it's not what you can get out of it. It's just because that's what it is when you uh, when you truly have been been saved, when you truly have been shown grace, been shown mercy, when your life's been changed, man, you just want to show everybody. You just want to, you know, tell everybody about it. And that's what it is. It's a merchant who buys, sells and trade. And it's not what you can buy. Obviously, it's just the context of of uh, putting forth. And allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you. Um, it says, who when he had found one pearl, one pearl of great price. Doesn't need a bunch. Just one pearl. What he's been looking for. And this is a merchant. Merchant seeking beautiful pearls. So I take it he's probably seen a bunch. But he finds that one pearl. That one pearl of great price. And went and sold all that he had and bought it. Because it's the investment, what they're putting into it. And how can they do it? How do they buy it? Well, they can't. They just put trust and faith into the one who already purchased it for him. Because that's what it is. He's just putting it into a context of the law amongst the, the children of Israel and the uh, religious scribes and, and Pharisees. Some Gentiles. But putting it into a form to where they can understand because Christ hasn't died for the sins of the world yet. So it's still in that law context. But as we can see, he's still laying the foundation of grace. Everything that he is is grace, love. And it's not like the uh, he just fulfilled the law. So, And as we're going to see and get into it, nothing changes. It's, it's just everything that the law is and that the prophets are hang on true love, which is God. God is true love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. And that's everything that he is by the spirit and what he proves, what he continues to prove. Um, so he went and sold all that he had and you give it all up. When you truly find that treasure, that context of the treasure, seek and you will find. All your focus, you realize that nothing else matters. You know, not only can you not take anything with you, they can't, nothing can do anything for you here. You can't speak to them. They won't help you, won't aid you, won't guide you. They rust, they rot, they material, you know, they're materialistic. You can't take any of it with you when you die. There's no true satis uh, satisfactory in anything of this world and in, in of pearls and jewels and diamonds. And you can see that all throughout the scriptures and you can see that all throughout to today. But when he found that one pearl of great price, you notice how it's not a bunch. See, that's the context. It's just one pearl. You know, you could have all these pearls, all these jewels, these diamonds, that abundance, that, uh, you know, and that's why you kind of linking it to the rich young ruler, go and sell all of it. Well, it was hard because the abundance, he couldn't even sell just a little bit of it because he was um, so content, so trusting, uh, so faithful into his riches. His riches are the ones that got him out of trouble. Um, whenever there was an issue, he'd go to his riches. Whenever he needed something, he'd go to his riches. God says, get rid of all of that. That's his comfort zone. So when you put it into a context of this, you realize it's just that one little, it's that seed, that, that, that Holy Spirit, that faith, sell it all, 
you realize nothing has true. Nothing in this world, no other religion, no treasure, nothing. When you truly find that one pearl, which is the true and living God, and, and what he has done for you through his son, you give it all. You give it all for him, and that's what it is because he is your treasure. He's the treasure. <coughs> And it's amazing. And that's what I'm saying. Like when I see, when I listen to you guys, when I see you guys and uh, just seeing the spirit at work through his people, man, it's, it's awesome. It's so awesome. The, the spirit and what God does, man. I just, I can't even, man. It's like, it does the, he obviously does the impossible, but Man, when you really think about it, man, there ain't anything compared to him and to who he is. And uh, it's not just, that's what I think the world thinks, like, you know, okay, oh, you know, you're saved. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, awesome. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't want to burn in hell for eternity because there is a wage for sin. Absolutely. We're guilty. But he goes way beyond that, you know. And I was thinking about that today. I was, uh, when I was out and I was doing stuff with my family, um, I was, I was thinking, and after I had, you know, I had some time by myself, so I was driving and I was driving with the Lord. Um, and I just, every time I get a chance to, I just talk to him, you know, it doesn't matter where I'm at, what I'm going through. I, I talk to him. If I'm in the grocery store, I'll talk to him. If I'm getting gas, I'll talk to him. I always talk to him. Um, and the thing, you know, I was thinking too, like, uh, sorry, I forgot where I was going with this. I was talking to him in the car and asking him, you know, um, Lord, what was I asking you? Why do I always do this, Lord? Sorry, guys. I get so, I get going on like how amazing God is and what he's doing through your guys' life, through the body of Christ, what's happening in the world, talking with them constantly, and then I get caught up on what exactly I was talking to them about. But just being able to know him, being able to have uh, a true friend who will never leave you, never forsake you, the one who aids you, the one who goes ahead of you, the one who you can always talk to, the one who helps you. It's just amazing. It goes beyond what the world thinks. I mean, obviously, acknowledging him and what he has done for us, being saved and what he is, you know, taking the wrath of God, taking our sh shame, our condemnation, you know, um, but just knowing him, having a relationship with the true and living God. And, you know, I was that's what I was talking to him today about. And I was thinking, you know, all throughout, you know, what the world and, uh, you know, what people try and just embed and bed and bed into our minds is. You know, obviously, it's good to have that that conscience because the Holy Spirit will tell tell us. You know, obviously, I'm, that's not what I'm saying, but it's like the enemy will try and want you to be like afraid to approach the Lord or afraid to go to the Lord. And you know, it's finished. He did it because he loves us. He welcomes us. You know, he told Moses, "Look, you need to go and you need to sacrifice." Um, he that's why he gave himself. He and you know, Paul says, "There's nothing that will separate us from the love of God." And it's not like all of a sudden one day he's just going to be like, how many times have I told you? No, it's finished on the cross. It's by his grace. We can approach him boldly. It's every single day. You're covered by the blood. It's just by faith. So obviously beyond that, but just from what the world can't understand and can't know that you now have the one, the creator of the entire world, the one who created you knitted you in the womb, called you, knows everything about you, more than your hairs, numbered, you know, thoughts, uh, could, could do more for you than anything. I mean, we could go all day. The one who gave you hands, the one who gave you the mind that you use, the one who's there just, who likes to, to be there, and the one who's there, because we're the world, and that's where I was kind of going with it. Sorry, there's just so much, and I'm just so much going on with what, what the Lord's having me do and just like being with him. And, uh, that's not what it is. It's just, Hey, come to me. You know, it's never just a certain, like a certain amount of time. I can't believe you did it again. You know, I can't believe it or just being afraid. It's just, 
or, or to even think, oh my goodness, I, I can't believe you doubted. No, he's, he's just right there saying, why, you know, why? Hey, you know, come to me. You know, he's a, he's your best friend. He's your father. He's your savior, your comforter, your aid. The one who's always there for you. Never be afraid ever to, to go to him, to call upon him, to just talk to him. That's what it is. Just talk to him. Be with him. It's amazing. He will talk to your heart. He will. And uh, it's just seeking him. That's what it is. He's not a fool, obviously. He knows if you truly want to seek him and you truly want to talk to him, he will talk to you and he will talk to your heart. And I'm not saying like he'll come, to, hey, you know, I'm just saying he will talk to you in your heart through through the word and, and just through prayer. You will feel it and uh, you'll feel him. And it's just amazing because that's what the world's missing out of, man. It just goes, it goes beyond salvation. It goes beyond, obviously, I mean, it doesn't because we're, I'm not taken away from that because all in all, that's, that's what it is. It comes from, it comes down to the blood of Christ. Him dying for our sins, raising again, and, and being salvation for all who call upon Him. That's it. But just, I wish they could just understand, you know, just that they could have a friend who's always there. One who will talk to them. One who will help them. One who's not, not going to be in there, oh, I told you not to do it again. You know, not one that's like, oh man, I can't believe, I can't go to him again, I can't go to him again. One that's standing there, the first one, come to me, come to me. You know, go into your word, show you. Um, the one who welcomes you. If there's ever a time where you're like, man, I'm just feeling guilty, I can't believe I did that. Do not let the, the world, do not let the enemy, don't let those, uh, just don't let the enemy tell you that, that the Lord is just standing there, just stomping his foot, you know, just like, I can't believe it, you know, can't believe it, don't you dare, you dare, no, he's the first one, he's right there saying, it's okay, you know, put it under the blood, put it under the blood, just come close to me, you know, comfort, it's just amazing, if only they could just know the true love, and, and it goes just beyond, um, I just wish that they knew that he just wants to get to know him, that's all, and just to walk with them. And that their life is more, um, because it truly is, it truly is great treasure and great value. And, and it's, it's, it's him. That's what it is. It's him. It's nothing else. It's not us. It's not this life. It's the life that's in him. And it's, it's who he is and what he promised. And everything that we have, you know, is by his mercy, by his grace. And you just, it's just, it's just amazing. Obviously I'm, you guys already know that, um, so just continuing on here, um, it says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. And it's awesome. It's just an, you know, and that just, cause it's free will. Who's going to do it? Who wants it? Who wants to be caught? Truly seek and you will find. And it's awesome because he's, you know, he called fishers of you know, fishermen, I'll make you true fishers of men. Well, this is the parable. That's what he's doing. And this is what he's truly doing right here. And this is what he's truly doing today. And what he's doing through us is, is fishing for, for men. And uh, that's what it is. Cast it out. Catch some of every kind. And when it's completely full, you drew it to shore. Check this out. This is really awesome too. Is shore is the beach. It'd be paradise. <laughs> but it's him. He's the treasure. He is um, the kingdom. And so you drew to shore, paradise, you know, where you can, because then that's what I'm referring to, because that's what it comes down to, just the separation from the uh, the wheat, the tares, the sheep from the goats, the sons of the uh, living God between the sons of the devil, um, just the separation. But um he, him being the kingdom, he, him being paradise. So when they have to stand in front of him, when they look upon him, they will bow to him. They will confess with their tongue that he is Lord. So they will be amongst paradise for a minute, for a second. Just like here, drag them and then separate. When they're full, they drew to shore. They sat down and gathered the good into vessels, new bodies getting new bodies and that's not to refer to obviously the church that is raptured up and we have new bodies just to refer to as the end the final judgment and those who have uh gone into it after the millennial reign 
into good vessels, new vessels by the, the living, the potter, um, the one who, who perfectly creates it because we'll be just like him. Uh, the body of Christ, our new glorified bodies, it says, but he threw away the bad. And that's just, that's what it comes down to. It's the kingdom of heaven. He is the kingdom who truly has faith in him. And, you know, our lives, what we, you know, what do we, um, what do we do when we truly, uh, when it comes down to life? Because he is the life. John chapter 14, verse 6, he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. So, what do we do when do we truly seek and want to and find out the meaning of life, the purpose, what we are called for? Because if we do, we will find. And when we truly find him, what are we going to do with it? You know, how's it going to affect our heart? Are we willing to truly die to ourselves, truly trust in him, walk in him? And he knows the heart. That's the thing. He's the one who's giving the parable. He is the living God in the flesh. And he's the one who knows the hearts of men. But he also, you know, that's just... It, it doesn't ever go beyond, oh, you know, you better do this. You better do that. He knows your heart. You better. No, it's just, it goes way beyond what, what the enemy is trying to pump in, what we've been trained to thought, what the carnal mind, the flesh mind tries to tell you is he already did everything. All we have to do is just believe and just to accept. And it, it's, it's amazing. We walk with him, you know, he'll show us who he is, who, who we are. Man, it's just he is the treasure and getting to know him is going to take all of eternal, uh, all of eternity because he is the uh, ever existing eternal being, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. So it's going to take all of the end, all of eternity to truly get to know him. You're never going to fully get to know him. He's the treasure. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter in this world, any other uh, false religion, you'll be satisfied or you won't be satisfied. There's never... You can fully come to knowing everything in, in, in that sense with those religions. Knowing everything there is to know about the money, the riches of this world, the wisdom of this world. But with the true and living God, not only does it go beyond salvation, go beyond knowing the creator. Knowing his love, his mercy, what he's done for us. Walking with him. Eternal life. It, it's just getting to know him and know who you are for eternity do you it's just more and more it's life and life more abundant because he is the true treasure so uh it says so it will be at the end of this age the angels will come forth separate the wicked from from among the just and cast them into the furnace of fire where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And you kind of understand what Christ is doing here too. Every parable, uh, I think except for one, maybe two, is the separation here of tares and weeds. Separation of the sons of the kingdom and sons of the world. And this is what he's doing right here and what he's doing today. But right here in the context with the Pharisees, with the scribes, with the religious leaders, he's separating them from his disciples and also applying judgment, pretty much, if you would, because, I mean, they go off of, you know, the law. They're looking to condemn him. Well, that one who actually, the one who fulfilled it, the one who gave it, the one who has been prophesied about is sitting there just like uh, laying it on him in a sense to where he's using their own. It's amazing. He's using their own. He could, he could do this. I mean, he's God. He could do whatever he wants. But he, you see what he's doing. He's using their logic, their wisdom against them to show them that it all points to him. And that no matter which angle you try and go with it, it's going back to him because he's the true and living God. Everything that they claim to stand on and to follow after. So they can't go anywhere with it. Okay. Um so it says notice here too that the angels will come forth and this is what another reference to the children of Israel in the context of who Christ is speaking to what it refers to the end of the age because he doesn't say at the end of this age. He says at the end of the age so it's the end. The focus is on uh Israel, the children of Israel. And the angels going forth 
just like what we read. Here, we'll even just go here real quick. Um, let's just go to Joel chapter 2. Or we can go to... Let's go to Exodus 19. I'm going to start in verse 12. It says, You shall set bounds for your people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned with a shot or with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses... Um, so notice here too, the trumpet. So it's not the trumpet of God or the great trumpet call. It's just a trumpet. And that's what we, it refers to in Matthew 24, the sound of the trumpet. So Moses went down uh, from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not uh, come near your wives. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there was thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled it and moses brought the people out of the camp to meet god and they stood at the foot of the mountain now mount sinai was completely in smoke because the lord descended upon it in fire its smoke ascended like the smoke of, the, of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly and this is also to refer to of, of when Christ, when Christ had died. And when the centurion says, you know, surely this is the son of God. And when it thunders and lightnings and he said, you know, it's finished. And he gave up the ghost and it quaked and it shaked and it thundered because it's finished. So now by him in him, he fulfilled the law. He's the true, just, righteous judge. So, and when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, it became louder and louder. Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Okay. So, right here, in seven, verse 17, And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Um, you know, just to get the context... Um, here, let's go here. Let's go to Isaiah 27. Um, it says, verse 12, uh, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will thresh from channel of the river of brook of Egypt, and you will gather, and you will be gathered one by one, O you children of Israel. So it shall be in that day the great trumpet will be blown, and they will come who are about to perish in the land of Assyria, and those who are outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. So context of Isaiah is not the trumpet call of God, is not the trumpet of God. It's a it's a great trumpet sound, just like what we're seeing uh in Exodus, just like what we'll see in Joel, just like what we see in Judges with Gideon. Um, and just like what we're kind of lining it up here. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys too. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. Big difference between the day of the Lord and the day of Christ. The rapture between the second coming. Focus on Israel and Israel alone. The children of Israel. Compared to the entire world. Right. Matthew 24. Um, verse 31, it says, He will send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to another. And just like we see. Um, think.
here's another one too. And verse 11 says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Josh the Abizarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. So we see this is him hiding the children of Israel and be in Petra. In the in the rock coverings where the Lord's going to take care of them for the last uh, three, three and a half years of the tribulation. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to line it up just to kind of try and show you the focus on Israel. Okay, right here, but the, verse 34, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew the trumpet, and the Abyssalites gathered behind him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh. Um, Hebrew uh, context for... Strong's Hebrew for messenger be angel too. So that's also what the other um, scriptures here refer to. But it says, who also gather behind him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali. And they came up to meet him. So just kind of getting the context. Kind of showing here how it's um, just the children of Israel. So it's the end of the age. Separate the wicked from among the just, just like Christ is doing here with the scribes, the Pharisees, with his disciples, a foreshadow of what's to come in Israel for the children of Israel, but also the whole world. So it says, Jesus said to them, have you understand all these things? And they said to him, yes, Lord. And you know, they truly did because they wouldn't lie to him. He knows their heart, but he also told them, understand. He's the one who gives understanding. He's the one who because uh, it's just it's a foreshadow of the true and living God inside of us, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. He is the Word of God, the one who gives understanding, the one who's there for us, guides us, shows us purpose, value, everything. So he says, last thing he says right here before he leaves, then he says to them, therefore, every scribe, so you see that this isn't um, referred to as the scribes and the Pharisees, instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven so they're instructed they're put there for you know if that's who they're going to be that's what they're going to be they're instructed they're, they're supposed to be doing uh they're supposed to be fulfilling the actual roles and they're they're not they're hypocrites it says it's like a householder who brings out the treasures uh his treasure things new and old now not all of them but um understand too here what Christ is saying, the, the scribe instructed, the one who's been instructed, who knows the law, understand the scriptures, the kingdom of heaven, because God doesn't change. They knew it. This was referred to as to them. It's like a householder, one who owns a house, so understand, but who brings out of his treasure the things new and old, because it's the New Testament and the Old Testament. So by this scribe, the one who would know the Old Testament would be able to truly bring out the, the things of the new because it lines up once you true have understanding of Christ you can under you can he will show you and line it up but that's just the difference right before he parts it's kind of just like leaving he always leaves them an out just to um you know there's always like that out of how they want to go about it and it's it's never just a complete shutdown for this moment and for this time he always leaves it to where it's the door still open. All you have to do is just believe. They can still come to him. As he says, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure because they know the law, they know the scriptures. So it's of his, but it's a householder. So it's, it's actually putting in, now you have one that will actually uh, have vacancy to the house who brings out that treasure, things new. And old. Notice how the things new, it's what's come come because the Old Testament uh, prophesies about what Christ is to come. 
And without Christ, without the new, the old wouldn't line up with it. <coughs> Excuse me. So what Christ is saying here too, when he puts the things new, because you truly understand God. Before there's no actual direct way. I mean, you had, you know, they had to, uh, there was only the high priest that could go in and even him, he had to uh, sacrifice for his sins. You know, there was um, never actually a time that you could truly get one-on-one -on -one with God. And that's what Christ is highlighting here, putting it into the treasure because he is the treasure. Everything refers off of him. Once you have him, it's like everything just kind of starts to open up and you start to see he is the eternal God. You now have a relationship with him. You're not born of the spirit. You walk with him. He shows you he is the treasure. And he's the one who is vacancy inside your house. But it's the scribe instructed because it's n nothing changes. It's just the uh, Old Testament letters that which is of the law and that which is of the prophets and how it would uh, bring forth that treasure, things new and old, because it's all referring to Christ and Christ to come and how it's the same. So now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables. So right after that, you notice how it's amazing because... He knows their hearts. He knows how they are. He knows what's going to happen. But you see his mercy and his grace still leaves them an out. So he, he, man, just the way that he does this in a form, you know, just not like any, not, not the way man would because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, but he's just using the hypocrisy against them to show it. And they're just like flabbergasted and, uh, but he always leaves them an out. Understand that. And then he just departs, all right. And they're probably just standing there like trying to figure out what, you know, what just happened. The disciples are like, yeah, absolutely. We totally understand. And Christ is like, awesome, you know. And he says, um, then he refers to the scribes, you know. If there's a scribe who's been instructed, you know, that which is concerning the kingdom of heaven. It's like the householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. And then he leaves. <laughs> and he just leaves them there. This is now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables, he just departed from there. Probably just left him like. <laughs> now, when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues. Understand that too. So it was his own country. This is the living God, but it was their synagogues. So that they were astonished and said, where did this man get wisdom that and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James, Joseph, Simeon, Judas, and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where did this man get all these things? So they're immediately putting him on their same level, putting him on the context not only of the law, what's physical, and, and putting him on the context of how they have them all figured out, taking away his complete deity, what he has done, because Mary, James, They've never done any of what Christ has done or taught what Christ has done. They're offended. That's the, that's the heart. It comes into the heart. But you see, they knew who he was. They knew, they knew all of his relatives, his brothers, where he hung out with. It's like they were expecting him. Where did this man get this wisdom and this mighty work? Because only that wisdom comes from God. And that's what he's showing them. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not the carpenter's son? You know, who, who is this? You know, you, you see that level. And that's the difference. And this is what we're seeing here now with Christ. Came down as a servant. It's not the, uh, not the healthy. And, and that which is, it's, the, it's not the, the um, those who are healthy that need a physician. Those who are sick. But how God uses the things of foolishness to uh, shame the wise the wise of this world because the foolishness of God or the foolishness of this world is the, is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God's foolishness because they don't understand. They could never understand. And they're just so, you know, flabbergasted, but you see what, how they do. Um, when it comes to being offended and putting it on him, it's not the carpenter's son is his mother not called Mary called Mary. So they won't even reference the fact that he was born a virgin, that this is the Messiah, obviously. Is his mother not called Mary? And his sisters, are they not with us? Where then did this man get these things? 
so they were offended at him. But Jesus uh, said to them, "A prophet's not without honor, except in his own country." Not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Because notice here too it says them. But he's also laying the foundation too of it's no longer by law. It's he is the kingdom. It's those born of the Holy Spirit brought into the family. It's the, the one who lives inside of us. And we're, we're all connected now in the body. So now being born of that spirit. Christ lives inside of us. Our body is the house. We honor him. We accept him. All the spirits, all the prophets, they have the spirit of the living God upon them. That's that's how they prophesy. They, they prophesy through Christ because Christ is the eternal uh, God who knows past, present, and future. Because the same prophet, that's what he's referring to here too, those prophets and the uh, even Moses, Abraham, it all came from God, which is the spirit who prophesies, which is Christ right there. And that's what he highlights. It's no longer about the country, the land, or certain houses because it's the new covenant. It's those in Christ, those born of the Spirit. And those who are truly born of the Spirit, brought into God's family, when Christ lives inside of us, our, our house, our body, uh, where he dwells, we honor him, we accept him because he's the true and living God. So it says, now he did not do many mighty works. So he did some but because of their unbelief. So he probably just did some to, to try and test them, see what they're going to do. I mean, he already knew. But um, also to have that there too for judgment, so there's nothing that they can say, nothing that they can say, oh, well, you know, you know, because he's the living God. But notice here too, it's because of their unbelief, and that's just what it comes down to. Belief, belief, belief. Faith, 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 trust. He did everything. And he can't do any mighty works, can't do anything, won't accept him because of their unbelief. And that's what it comes down to. So that was Matthew chapter 13. Uh, so now we're going to get uh, Herod, I think, starts shaking, starts thinking that uh, Christ is John the Baptist. Okay, not quite yet. So this is this is where John actually gets beheaded in prison. So yeah, right on. So... <coughs> Let's uh, go into prayer real quick and just thank the Lord for the uh, the time together in his scriptures and for his understanding and just to have the Holy Spirit um, allow us to take these words with us and just to apply it and just to glorify him. So Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. Lord Jesus, thank you for being with us. Thank you that we can come together and just um, read your word, the word that you have given us for you. The, you are the true living word. We come to you. And you are the one that shows us. You're the one who helps us to understand, who shows us more about you. And that's what it is. And it's just coming together to glorify you, know more about you. And I just thank you. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for your scriptures. I thank you that you have allowed me to be a tool to uh, just just to uh, speak through, Lord. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be with us, that your words would just marinate on our heart, would resonate and would apply to our life, that we would take it with us, that we could understand, that it won't just go in one ear and out the other, that it hits the heart, because it's the word of God, it's the sword that hits the heart, and it's not just a, a, a hitting the heart for conviction, it's also for good too, and what we take w with us, because you are the living word, and we just, we just love you, and we live to glorify you, and I just thank you, thank you for this time, Lord, thank you for uh, your family, my family, the body of Christ, um, thank you that we can come together. Thank you for keeping them strong, Lord. I just pray that they, that you would um, keep their assurance, keep their faith uh, strong, letting them know over and over that, that you're with them, never leaving them, never forsaking them, that you're on the throne. Nothing happens unless you allow it to happen, that you're always with them, Lord, and that, that you're there just to call out, just to walk with, just to pray with for anything, Lord, because you are the true and living God. And I thank you, Lord, and I live to worship you. I live to serve you, and I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for your people, for your family, for my family, Lord. Thank you. In your holy name, Lord, I love you. Amen. Right on, guys. So I hope you have a good night. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, you know, I'm not really too sure yet. I'm probably going to be getting to bed here shortly, honestly. I'm tired. Probably just get something to eat. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably see you guys in just like a day or so, uh, just whenever the Lord has me. I'm still working on putting 
uh, a lot of stuff together to show you guys um, trying to do it in detail trying to just bring it down to exact um, and I trust the Lord I trust the Lord in his time and I trust that he would tell me because I can't do this on my own obviously I go off of him what he shows me his timing his way and I trust him and he would show me if I needed to get it out quick quickly so I'm working on that that's coming shortly I have other stuff that I'm going to upload. I'm going to focus too on judges as well. And then when I'm finished with uh, everything that the Lord has me doing too, um, just with the mark, um, putting it into detail, um, then we'll have that. So yeah, right on guys. I hope you guys have a, a good rest of your day. I'll see you in a day or so. And uh, yeah, God bless you. I'll see you soon, all right?